Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about why I still play NGS and why I still cover this game, even though I just did like a massive rant in yesterday's video. So uh, if you haven't seen that rant yet, I recommend that you watch that first before coming to this video so that you have a little bit of context. But as usual, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part I want to talk about is why I still play NGS. And then the second part is going to be why I still cover NGS. So the main difference is one is just me playing the game. And the second part is why do I still make videos about this game? All right. So let's start off with point one. So why do I still play NGS? First point is very simple. I play in moderation. I only play one to two hours every single day at most. Now, I know a lot of people think that, Caro, you probably grind a crap ton, don't you? This is like pretty much the only game you play, da di da di da Well, yes, this is pretty much the only game that I play, like my main game, I suppose you can say that. But I also have life and other crap and responsibilities that I need to take care of. And unfortunately, because of all of that, I'm not able to just play video games all day. As much as I would love to play video games all day, but uh, YouTube doesn't pay me enough nor does Twitch, nor does anything. So uh, I don't make enough money to support myself by just playing video games and doing YouTube. However, if that dream ever becomes realized and I do make enough money to support myself, I would love to go full time and uh, just play video games all day and get paid for it because why the hell not? That's like a dream job. Now the second point is probably what you guys want to hear and that is I still enjoy the game because I have goals to actively work towards. So I give myself goals in NGS. I'm like, yo, I want to achieve X, Y, Z. And then I just slowly work towards those goals. Now, obviously, if I'm not having fun pursuing said goal, I will change the goal. You know, this goal post or whatever that I set is not static. It can change any time, you know. If I suddenly get bored of farming for Dreadkeeper 3, for example, I'm like, yo, screw that. You know, I'm not going to farm for veterans anymore. I'm going to go farm for something else. And that's perfectly fine. So what exactly were my goals? My first goal was very simple, was fully gear out my ship 2 character, which is my main character. And you guys have seen my ship 2 character. If you haven't, I'll link the video in the description below. But I have fully geared her out. She is geared out of the wazoo, pretty much min-max for my personal playstyle. So that was my first goal and I achieved it. So I was like, okay, what now? My second goal was to fully gear out my budget character on ship one. And that has also been completed. I completed this like four days ago. It took three weeks of farming and I managed to achieve it. So boom, second goal complete. So now what? What is my third goal? What am I working towards now? And my third goal is to simply level up all the classes to level 40. So right now I only have Braver and Force at level 40. So that leaves quite a lot of classes that are still like level 20. Like I didn't even touch them. After I got them to level 20 and the whole Retem region came out, I was just like, yeah, screw all the other classes. I'm just going to focus on Braver and Force. And now is the time to start leveling up all those other classes because, well, I don't have anything better to do, to be perfectly honest with you guys. I could farm for more money and make money on the side and stuff like that. But uh, other than just regular farming, sometimes you just get bored of that. Or sometimes if you just feel like doing combat zones, you want to get something out of it, right? So uh, yeah, leveling all my classes to 40 is my next goal. So while we're on the topic of goals, my third point is I don't force myself to play PSO2. To be honest, out of the one to two hours I play every day, it's really just logging in to do the urgent quest and now I log off and I just wait until I get the Discord notification of like, oh, there's another urgent quest coming up and then I'll log in and I'll do it. So this is really unfortunate because I really wish we had the schedule back like in the base game because it was so much easier to plan my day when I had that schedule to be like, okay, so I know these times are where the urgent quest is going to happen. So I'm going to make sure that I take like a short break, like a 15 minute break or a 20 minute break so that I can do the urgent quest instead of just like suddenly seeing, oh crap, it's Dark Falls, drop everything that I'm doing and to do the urgent quest, right? Um, because sometimes I can't do that, obviously. Sometimes, you know, in the middle of work or I've got a client or I'm doing something outside and it's like, well, crap, it's Dark Falls. I can't do it. Too bad. GG. So it is quite unfortunate that we don't have a schedule. But you know, it's not the end of the world for me. If I miss an urgent quest, I'm just like, well, screw it, whatever. We missed one. It's not a big deal. 
because you know you're gonna get your scales eventually anyway right so back to point three of i don't force myself to play however this also applies to when i log in to actually physically play the game what exactly do i do so this leads us to point four where i rotate between activities to prevent burnout so at the moment there aren't that many things i can do in game because i'm fully geared out so there's no more sense of progression however these are the things that i like to do First of all, when an urgent quest is up, I always tend to do the urgent quest because it respects your time the most, you know, gives a bunch of EXP, gives Masetta, and a bunch of useful materials. Second of all, I like to do my material gathering route every single day. I like to do combat zone grinding, veteran farming, purple triggers, as well as the occasional deafness 3 farm. And these are really the only activities that I do in NGS right now. I don't do anything else really. Let me know in the comment section below if I miss something or maybe you do something that I didn't mention because uh, I would love to know what other activities there are to do in this game so uh, I can mix things up. But to reiterate point four, you know I've got all of these things that I like to do in game and so whenever I log on it just really depends on my mood. If I want to do some PSE farming then I just go to a combat zone. If I want to do veteran farms, if I want to do purple triggers or whatever, I will just do whatever I feel like doing and I really just throw efficiency out of the window because I don't give a crap about efficiency. I'm just here to have fun and de-stress. Now point five is something that not a lot of people do and understandably and that is I go out of my comfort zone slash routine to figure things out which I don't know. So this could mean like learning a new class, this could be finding new farm routes, trying different augments on gear, etc. So learning new classes is definitely something that I like to figure out, I like to try out, because the way that I learn has always been hands-on. Like I could watch a video guide or read a Google document and like learn the class ins and out, but it doesn't mean squat until I actually get my hands on the class and start playing it. Because for me, it's all about muscle memory, learning timings, learning boss rotations. And while I could learn that from reading and watching, the best way that I learn is actually playing the class or doing said activity. And so, uh, yeah, I really like to go out of my comfort zone as well as routine to just try to learn new stuff about the game, especially during these periods where there's really nothing much to do. So just like right now, I'm learning how to play Hunter again, even though I did play Hunter in the beginning up to level 20 before Braver came out. But things have changed now. Hunter now has a couple new skills on their skill tree. And in two weeks time, we're getting a whole bunch of new photon art. So I'm really looking forward to that because it's something new. It's something fresh. It's going to make the classes a lot more interesting. And the last reason why I still play NGS has to do with this channel, of course, and that is because I create video content about this game every single day. So it's a huge driving force to keep me interested in the game, to find interesting things about the game, to experiment with new things, and just find out what's new or what's janky or what's interesting about the game. Because, well, as you guys know, it's not easy to make daily content every single day. You can ask any other content creator and they will tell you it is hard. It is very, very hard to think of interesting topics to talk about every single day. So while we're on the topic of content creation, let us talk about why do I still cover New Genesis on my channel? Why do I keep covering this game that has such a small and niche player base? Well, the first point is because I have faith in Sega and the new Genesis team that the game will become really good, but it is a matter of time. So I made a gamble in the very beginning when I started covering PSO2, the base game, because I believed that, yo, NGS is coming out in a year or two years, and I think that it's going to be good. So I took a gamble. I went all in on PSO2, on the base game. I covered it for a year, and then NGS came out, and my channel exploded on the first month. I gained almost 10,000 subscribers in one month alone. But unfortunately, things fizzled out very, very quickly as people soon realized that, well, there's no real content in this game, and people slowly left and started playing other games which did have content. Especially last month when Lost Ark came out, and this month when Elden Ring came out, you could see a huge dip 
in the active player base in NGS and it was also reflected on my channel through the views. It really, really hurt the channel because, well, you know, less people were interested about NGS and more people are interested about Lost Ark as well as Elden Ring because it was a new shiny game and a lot of people were just, you know, having a lot more fun there because there was more content to do. And, you know, I can't blame those people. I would do the same if that was my jam, right? If I was super into Lost Ark, if I was super into Elden Ring, I would be playing that all day long. However, lucky for you guys, it's not really my jam. And after playing a little bit of Lost Ark, I still gravitated back to PSO2. So to recap point one, I still have faith that this game will become good. It's just going to take time. And uh, how much time? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, my second point is PSO2 is still one of the most free to play friendly games I've ever played. This still remains true even though I understand that the scratch tickets are extremely greedy, especially if you want those motion items at the very end, those like, I think it's like 45 scratches or like $90 or something. It's stupidly expensive, extremely greedy. I don't think it's a very good practice on Sega's half to uh, sell those motion items at such an extreme cost. But the rest of the game is extremely free to play friendly. I've been free to play since the game came out on global all the way till now. So that's like two years, a little bit more. And I am still doing fine. I'm able to get all the items I want, all the capsules I want. There's nothing that has really gated me from progression. And uh, yeah, it's really still one of the best games for a free to play player to enjoy. I don't need to jump through any weird loopholes or play every single day to keep up. And this leads us to the third point where the game respects the player's time to the point where you can take several months off and catch up to end game gear easily within a week, which is great for casual play and thus very easy to recommend. So PSO2 is actually a very, very easy game. They don't have anything too difficult, there's no real mechanics, and gearing is pretty straightforward as well as leveling. Now I think the dev team designed the game like this on purpose so that it can attract the casual player crowd. Because, to be fair, the casual player doesn't really have that much time to play video games all the time. Well, simply because they're the casual player. They like to hop from game to game, they like to dabble a little bit in FPS, a little bit in MMOs, a little bit in JRPGs, and we never really settle down on a game and go really hardcore on something because that's just not the way we roll. We're casual gamers, you know? We just play whatever tickles our fancy at the moment, and we're just there to enjoy the moment. We're not looking for a game to commit our time into. And thus, NGS is a really easy game to recommend to casual players, because it's like, yo, you log in, you do your dailies, you can log off, you're done. And then you can come in the next day, do the same, maybe do your weeklies. And yeah, it's really easy to catch up to the end game. All you need to do is just buckle down a couple of hours and boom, you're almost max level. And on top of all of that, the game is free to play, which is also a huge plus. Now for a more substantial reason on why I still cover this game, and that is of course, there is a lot of things about this game which is not explained very well in-game. Thus, as a content creator, I like to explain as well as inform people about certain things that they may miss. So you may have noticed that a lot of the videos that have done well are mainly the ones just reminding you guys, hey, you know, these are the patch notes, this is the TLDR, you know, what is the NGS headline about? Because some people just don't have the time or just don't care to watch the NGS headline or read the patch notes or dig through the website and blah 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 and they just want to go to a source which is my channel and just be like yo give me the TLDR in like 10 minutes and that's what I do for a lot of my videos it's really just I read everything I distill it down to the important parts I give you the TLDR and uh, you save time and you don't need to read all this mumbo jumbo. But on top of that, there's a lot of in-game things which also need explaining. So for example, a lot of people didn't know that Force had chain lightning. They're like, oh, I, they didn't know Zonde was a chain lightning ability because, you know, some people just never played Force. Maybe they were a hunter main or a gunner main or a ranger main and they never played the Force class. Then when they do try the Force class, they're like, yo, what technique do I use? This is so complicated. I'm used to having three skills. Now I have like 12 skills. What do I use? How do I do all of these things? And what should my gear be? What should I be augmenting? What should I be prioritizing? And there's a lot of these questions which I answer in my videos, in my guides, teaching people, yo, this is a budget gear guide. As a technique user, you should focus on these 
these things. And of course, when it comes to the Braver, which is my main class, I am more than happy to share my wealth of knowledge about the Braver class because, uh, well, this is the class that I play the most because I just love the Braver class. It's literally a samurai class. You have a bow, you have a katana, and it's just freaking awesome. And last but not least on why I still cover NGS is more of a selfish reason, and it's simply because I want to share my excitement, my joy, my fun in the game, right? Because there's a lot of channels out there, there's a lot of negativity in life, and I don't need to add to that, right? You guys have enough problems in your life. You guys just want to have a good time, you guys just want to have fun, which is why my videos have always been more towards the positive side. I'd like to say that my channel is probably 90-95% positivity, 5% or 10% negativity, so a lot more positive over negative. And the reason for this is simply because I don't want to drag you guys down. I don't want to bring all this bad news and negativity to your life because there's enough bad stuff going on in the world. Just for example, I've been stuck in lockdown ever since I moved. I literally moved, I had a week where I was like, life was good. I went to the gym, I was working out, I was getting healthy, life was good, and BAM! I get hit with a two week lockdown. And I'm just like, bruh, I just moved here and I got a lockdown now. All of my packages, the gym, the pool, everything, locked down. Can't do anything. Locked in my house for two freaking weeks. Like, you know, th that's, that's enough bad news on my half, but I don't feel the need to share it with you guys in like every single video or reflect it in my videos and be like, Oh yeah, this sucks, man. What the fuck? Nya, 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 nya. Like, you guys don't need that in your life, right? You guys don't need me to bog you down with my problems, which is why I really like to focus more on the silver lining, on the positivity, and seeing like, all right, you know, the game's not amazing right now. There are a ton of issues, but what is good right now? What can we do right now to enjoy this game? And if I'm not enjoying the game, well, I'll just play other games, right? So uh, you guys will probably see a review of A Stranger in Paradise pretty soon, probably in the next coming weeks, because uh, Square Enix was very kind and actually gave me a review copy. So I will be playing that during my free time, probably the entirety of today. So uh, by the time this video comes out, the servers will be up. But while the servers are down, I will be playing Stranger in Paradise because, uh, well, you know, you always have to mix things up. You always have to have fun. That's the most important thing that I want to stress to everyone, because at the end of the day, I want you guys to have fun. It's a freaking video game, guys. You're playing a video game. Why are you getting so mad and stressed over a video game? That is something I will never really understand. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully it was a little bit more lighthearted, more enjoyable than yesterday's video. I know I went a little bit hard in yesterday's video with the roasting, as well as uh, maybe a little bit of negativity. But hopefully today's video was a little bit more enjoyable to listen to. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. For those who stuck around, we're going to do the thumbnail now. We're going to do a... Am I high on copium or something? So, uh, what what should my facial expression be? I think that's a good thumbnail. But anyway, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye! What can I say except you're welcome For the heals, the boosts, the rest